We are here today in the heart of Eureka Springs at the Crescent Hotel. We're gonna take you through and show you an inside look of what really makes it famous. Now the building itself is amazing in its own sense. Tell us a little bit about the architecture. Sure. Well, it was meant to be that way. Uh, it was meant to be significant uh, nationally. Uh, Richard Karens uh, hired, uh, and Paul Clayton hired uh, an architect who was uh, significant at that time. Isaac Taylor was his name. Uh, he had just completed the St. Louis World's Fair. Okay. Uh, and Isaac Taylor had transitioned and tried to invent his own style of architecture uh, and started building hotels. The Crescent Hotel was one of those. And, uh, you know, they brought uh, Irish stonemasons here. Uh, this. This rock is all harvested from the local quarry in Beaver, Arkansas, and uh, the, the Irish stonemasons uh, put it together. The hotel has been transformed to many different things throughout the years. Le walk us through the different things the hotel has served as. Sure, sure. In the early stages, it was a summer destination, invitation-only resort. Um, and, you know, as, as things ebb and flow, uh, it turned to a, a point where the financials required to keep the building going required uh, a usage of something in the, in the winter time. Uh, so the Crescent College and Conservatory was formed. So in the winter, it was a girls' school. Uh, in the summer, it was a, a destination spa resort. Uh, in fact, in 1937, it was sold to a gentleman who was operating hospitals out of Muscatine, Iowa. His name was Norman Baker, and he thought he had a cure for cancer, but probably went a little too far, and ran into a little organization called the American Medical Association that disagreed with him. Uh, but uh, many things happened here during that time frame. Uh, uh, people did pass away. He did convert the, the hotel to a hospital. He painted it lavender and brought in Art Deco, and uh, so it was, a, it was an interesting time. Uh, but uh, the Baker Hospital uh, did operate for a couple of years. Um, many of those people are still around. Uh, and uh, uh, then it was shut down in 1939 when Baker was sent off to Leavenworth uh, for mail fraud, believe it or not, of all the things. It then uh, sort of prodded along until uh, uh, our, our most recent owners came here in 1997. And, and our owner uh, famously said, you know, uh, I, I promised to bring this hotel uh, in five years back to where it was a hundred years ago. Well, I think you've done a very good job of it and stuff. Eureka Springs the last 10 years has become that destination again. Everybody wants to come here. They want to get married here. They want to come explore Eureka Springs. So I think you've done a very good job Great. of that. Thank you so, so much. Uh, let's go check out the spa and some other places around the hotel. You bet. Let's do it. Oh wow, you are not kidding. This is a world-class salon and stuff. What kind of services do you offer? Well, we are a destination spa and salon. Uh, so we have things that you'd ordinarily assume, the massage therapy and, and uh, manicures, pedicures, but we also have a, a beautiful salon that overlooks the Ozark Mountains uh, in a historic space. Now, this room that we're walking into, it wasn't originally part of the spa. What was this room originally? Hey, you're in the bowling alley. Bowling alley. <laughs> we realized when we pulled up the floor of the fitness area that there were bowling lanes underneath it, full-size bowling lanes. Couldn't figure out a way to use that. So we ended up pulling that up and we found duck pin lanes uh, underneath. So uh, we, we decided to incorporate that because it's a neat part of our history here. So you can picture the girls uh, at the college down here just sort of rolling the duck pin balls down and pin setters at the other end. Now there's something else here in the lower level of the hotel and stuff that I've heard a few stories about. Well, I've been holding one thing back. I, I guess we can take you there uh, at this point. All right. I have to admit, I'm a little creeped out here. Now, uh, there's a few famous pictures floating around online and stuff. What, uh, there's one with the guy with the top hat? Yeah, he might be with us right now. Uh, but uh, yes, the full body apparition was captured just a few feet from us right here. And if you take a couple of steps back, that's of course the, the walk-in cooler where the patients that maybe didn't make it through the night uh, would have been held. Now you mentioned something about you had excavated some bottles and some uh, canisters and things we like did. that recently. I'm going to show you a whole lot of them. 
but we have learned from individuals who used to work at the hotel back uh, at that time frame that uh, the bottles were stored here and stored in this area that I'm going to show you uh, here shortly. I mean, there's over 500 bottles here. Oh, wow. We're looking at things like a bone saw, medical bottles. These jars are where the medical specimens were located. Some of them were, were broken. We do have multiple uh, jars that still have medical specimen in them. And if I could show you, right here is the miracle cure. So every morning- the cure for cancer. Every, right every morning you would get a little of this elixir and it'd be part of your cure here at the, the Baker Cancer Hospital. Wow, for just being here two years, he's come become a everlasting part of the history. It absolutely Crescent. is. And, and the patients that were here, uh, many of them are still around.